Hey, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike. I'll be talking about my collection. Uh, in my last video, uh, I reviewed the G.I. Joe Collectors Club figure subscription service number three from 2015. And in today's video, I'm going to take a look at figure subscription service number four from 2016. So again, there was 13 figures, 12 figures that were known to us in advance, and they shipped out to us in pairs over the course of six months. And then in the final shipment, we got a 13th mystery figure, which wasn't revealed to us in advance. So I'm going to take a look at each of those figures in the order that they arrived. And uh, yeah, so let's, here we go. In the first shipment that arrived, we got Law and Order version 7. So this here is Law, the G.I. Joe's MP, and this is his dog, Order. Now this here is based on the original 1987 Law figure, which I was a big fan of. Now we actually did get uh, two prior versions of Law in the modern era. So the first one came out as part of the Rise of Cobra movie line and he was wearing kind of a desert camo. It didn't really look anything like Law. But then we got this version as part of the G.I. Joe Renegades line. So there's Law and there's Order. And it's a pretty nice figure. It's a good update to Law. I would have been happy if this was the only Law in my collection. Although I am a nostalgic guy and I do prefer the vintage colors. So I was happy that the club did give us the uh, vintage colored version here. See the head sculpt there. This wasn't a new head sculpt for Law, but it looks good. I actually think he looks a lot better than the original 87 version, which always seemed kind of pudgy to me. This guy looks a little more believable as an MP. But yeah, so Law looks great, and so does Order. Compared to the vintage version of Order, uh, Order didn't have much in the way of paint. Um, and he didn't have any gear. This one here has kind of got like a little tactical vest. He's got multiple paint apps. And yeah, he turned out pretty good. Still no articulation in the dog, though. He's just a solid piece of plastic. And with Law, we got Nunchuck version 5. So this version of Nunchuck is based on the 1992 original. And Nunchuck was a member of the Ninja Force sub-team. Now, I had stopped buying G.I. Joes by then when I was a kid, so I don't really have any uh, affinity for Ninja Force. I never had Nunchuck when I was a kid. But this does a pretty good job of recreating uh, the vintage look. Um, Nunchuck had come out, like as I mentioned, this is version 5. Most of the versions of Nunchuck that came out after version 1... Uh, they totally changed the look of him. He looked more like Quick Kick. Uh, he didn't have a mask. He didn't have a shirt. Um, he was barefoot. So I'm glad that they went back to the original for this here. And the original vintage figure had kind of a cloth uh, that came off of his mask here. So this has been recreated. It's not cloth this time, but it's uh, just part of the plastic sculpted mask. And there's no new parts here with Nunchuck. He's a mix of parts we'd seen before on Storm Shadow and whatnot. Even this mask here had come with a version of Storm Shadow in the past. But it all comes together and works pretty well to create Nunchuck. In the second shipment of FSS4, we get Barricade. Now, there's pro if uh, you guys listen to my videos, you might be thinking at this point in time that I am a... Uh, I like everything. Um... Because when I go on G.I. Joe message boards and whatnot, or I read other reviews, there's a lot of people that are very critical of these figures. And I don't think I've really said any figure was bad in the first three figure subscription services. And uh, yeah, this one here, it's very tough to find anything to like. This, I would say, is the first really bad figure that the club gave us in their subscription services. Now... I always try and look for the silver lining. Barricade is 
a character that we didn't have in the modern era before now. So it's nice to get new characters. Now uh, this figure here is based pretty much completely off of the accelerator armor that appeared in the first G.I. Joe live action movie, Rise of Cobra. So this one here is Ripcord in his accelerator suit. So if I take the helmet off there, you'll see Marlon Wayans likeness under there. Now for Barricade, he's got no new parts. He's all the accelerator suit. And underneath, he's got uh, a head that was originally used on Chuckles. But it looks different than Chuckles because Chuckles was blonde. This guy's got his hair painted black. But uh, yeah, I'm just not a fan of the proportions of this figure or the colors. Uh, part of that is the fault of the vintage figure. This is based on the 1992 original, and it was kind of a stinker too. Not that I had it, but uh, yeah. It did come with some uh, neat weapons though, I guess. He's got his uh, sledgehammer, and he also came with a missile launcher that fired, and then he's got a shotgun there as well. And with Barricade, we got Night Creeper version 13. And this guy is described as an ice ninja. Now you'll see here, he's uh, very white and blue. And yeah, if you were going to be an ice ninja, I guess this is what you look like. Now this Night Creeper does have those same shallow little socked feet that Night Creeper leader has. So if you watched my last video, you know what a pain in the ass it can be to get these guys to stay standing. They fall off their base relatively easily. Now this is the, uh, I think the third version of Night Creeper that we got in the modern era. This here is the first. So this Night Creeper, he stays on his base a little better because he has different legs. You'll see they used a lot of the same parts, the same head, the same torso, but they did change up the legs for uh, the Ice Ninja version. So this version was based on the very original vintage Night Creeper, but there was this version in the vintage line as well. It came out in 1998. So kind of after the official end of the vintage line, but kind of in that uh, no man's land, those odd few years between the end of the vintage line and the beginning of the new sculpt line in 2002. But yeah, it's a nice figure. I wish it stood up better. But uh, I really like the look of it a lot. And I even like the look of those feet better than the feet that came on this version of the Night Creeper. But yeah, it's just unfortunate that he doesn't stand up so good. In the third shipment, we get uh, Jammer, or as his uh, display base tells you, Calvin Jammer Mondale. Now this is Jam Jammer version 2. Version 1 came out um, in a 2010 convention box set from the club as well. But uh, Jammer did not appear in the vintage line. Like um, some of the figures I talked about in the previous, previous figure subscription services, Jammer was actually based on a figure that was released in the UK in 1984. So in the UK, they took a lot of the original Joes and just changed the paint slightly and gave them different names. And they've become highly sought after by uh, collectors because they're Similar to the figures we got, but they're technically different characters that had different names and all that sort of stuff. So in the vintage line, the vintage Jammer was just a stalker figure that they gave a red hat and they painted that little uh, logo on his chest. And that was essentially the only difference. So you, you might have thought that's what they would do here. So like here is a version of stalker. And so, yeah, I would have expected they could have just taken this figure, painted his hat red, put the logo on, and been done with it. But they didn't quite do that. They did take a, a new stalker head. Now, it wasn't new for this figure here. They created it, uh, I think, the year prior for the Tiger Force set, where we got Tiger Force stalker. But uh, the body is different than any that of the previous stalker figures. Um, the cap is removable, which is cool. He's got different gear. You'll see here he's got like dial tones, communications pack. And since he's a member of the, uh, the UK team, you'll see that he's got uh, the Union Jack flag and the 
I guess the Action Force logo on his chest. And that is consistent with uh, some of his teammates. So here's Coral from Figure Subscription Service 1. You'll see they've kept it consistent. She's got the logo as well. She's also got the silver base. And that's consistent with uh, some of the other UK figures that the club gave us in their past figure subscription services. So we've got Bombardier and TNT, who are also repaints of UK figures. And they've all got those gray bases to keep them uh, consistent. And with Jammer, we also got Pathfinder version 3. So this is based on the 1990 uh, version 1 Pathfinder. And it's a pretty accurate recreation. He's got those kind of crazy pants on, his vest, he's got his hat. Now this figure here, he uses the same head as Lifeline. So you'll see here's Lifeline. He's also got the head with the glasses sculpted on. So they made them look a little different because they've painted the hairline a little different on this figure. But they still look a little too similar for my liking. I wish they'd given Pathfinder a new head. Um, the original figure had the hat sculpted right on. I would have been fine with that too, just to make them a little more unique. It's hard not to see Lifeline when I look at this Pathfinder figure. But uh, the club only has so much money to create new parts. And it looks like they put their money towards recreating his vintage uh, weed whacker uh, weapon or tool. So they kind of had to give us that because that, uh, that was his thing in the vintage line. But uh, still, I wish we got a new head with Pathfinder. In the fourth shipment, we got Bullhorn version 3. And this is based on the original 1990... Uh, version of Bullhorn. And they do a pretty good job of recreating the vintage look. Um, from the neck down, it looks like Bullhorn. And again, the, the club seems to have invested their retooling dollars to create a new uh, replica of his Bullhorn, which of course uh, Bullhorn would need. Uh, he also came with some additional accessories I don't have here, one of them being a gas mask, which was pretty cool looking. Now he does not have a new head, and I don't think the head works here. Um, like it's a, it's a fine looking head, and this looks like a decent figure, but it doesn't look like bullhorn to me. Uh, the vintage figure had kind of a rounder face, uh, a little different hairstyle. Um, so when I see this figure, I just don't see Bullhorn. Now, this head is a reuse. Um, we've seen it many times. I mentioned in my last video. Um, it first came on Dusty. So here you'll see Dusty. And I mentioned, mentioned it in my last video because we got the same head on Spearhead. And I said in my last video that I was fine with the reuse for Spearhead because I think it actually looks like him. Uh, I just don't find it looks like Bullhorn. So while this is a good figure, and I suppose I could display him with his gas mask on and that would solve the problem of him looking like these other guys. But uh, yeah, the accessory is nice. And uh, it was nice to get a new character uh, in the modern era that we didn't have before. And along with Bullhorn, we also got Inferno Bat version 2 in the fourth shipment. So this is based on a 2003 figure, uh, which was like this figure. It was cast in translucent orange plastic. So I don't know how well the camera picks that up, but this is translucent, like see-through plastic. And it looks pretty good. Now, while the, uh, the 2003 Inferno Bat did not share um, all the same sculpting from the original 1985 or 86 Bat, um, this one here does use pretty much all the same parts as the original modern era Bat. So 
the Inferno Bat's head sculpt would have been different from the vintage bat, but here they have the same same face, which I'm fine with just for consistency. Um, they did make a change here with the legs. Um, I'm not quite sure why they decided to give them these these legs. I don't think they necessarily improve the look of the figure, but I'm I'm fine with it. Uh, one change they did make for this figure is they uh, gave him this sword hand, which all the other bats we've gotten, including the the nano bat from Figures and Prescription Service number one, they've all got the same attachments of the flamethrower, the claw, the extra hand, and the drill or whatever this is. So Inferno Bat was the first one to come with this bladed hand. Now we saw these bladed hands on bats in the new sculpt era, so it's kind of cool to see them back again here now. And yeah, I love the bat. As I mentioned in a previous video, I think this is one of the best sculpts in the modern era. It looks great. And uh, yeah, I'm always happy to get it in a new color variation. So Inferno Bat it's pretty cool. In the fifth shipment, we got Billy Arbok version one. Now, uh, I think they just made up the name Arbok here. It's an anagram or whatever for Cobra. But this is just Billy. Now, uh, for you not familiar with this character, he is one that fans have been waiting for for a very long time. This is Cobra Commander's son, and he was introduced in the Marvel Comics uh, pretty early on in the run, back in the 80s. And when he was first introduced, he was a young boy, probably about 12 years old, and uh, he joined forces with G.I. Joe to help overthrow his father. And a Cobra assassin, Scrap Iron, blew up the car he was in, and Billy lost a leg and an eye. And so then when Billy reappeared, he was a little bit older, he had the eye patch, he had a prosthetic leg, and he began training under Storm Shadow as a ninja. And he was featured prominently in the comics for a number of years, published by Marvel and then into the comics by uh, Devil's Do and into the comics by IDW. So yeah, he's been a mainstay in G.I. Joe for a long time, but he has never had a figure before. So the club finally gave us one. He's got a brand new head with this sculpted eye patch. And the head looks pretty good. This is the version of Billy I would have wanted. Um, fans have always been a little torn. Some people want the younger version, maybe pre-eye patch. Maybe some with the prosthetic leg being a little more obvious. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much exactly how I would want Billy to look. This is how he looked through a lot of the uh, the Devil's Due comics, which I really liked. And yeah, I think he comes across uh, pretty awesome. And with Billy, we got Interrogator version 5. So this is, as his name would uh, indicate, the Cobra Interrogator. This is based on the 1991 original figure. Um, there's no new parts here. Um, this is all reused parts. The helmet is removable. Well, you can tell it's been a while since I took some of these helmets off. It's on there pretty good. Yeah, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna wrestle with it. Um, the helmet is removable, I promise. Underneath there, he's just got a masked head, which originally appeared on the Rise of Cobra movie version of Flash. Um, it's nothing special under there. The helmet is it's kind of a new piece. It's uh, been retooled from a, um, a 2010 figure that the club gave us, which was the first time Interrogator appeared unmasked. The first three versions of the figure in the, uh, the O-ring style, the head was just one sculpted piece. But in uh, 2010, the club gave us an unmasked version. And so, yeah, they reused that, that mask uh, for this. And, yeah, I think this figure is great. This is a character I don't know a whole lot about because I had stopped buying Joes by the time the original came out in 91. But uh, he has appeared in some of the comic books. He's a member of the Cobra sub-team The Plague, along with Blackout from Figure Subscription Service number one. And yeah, I just think he's a really cool figure. He kind of looks like Cobra Commander. Um, he's got some neat accessories there. The handcuffs, for example. And yeah, 
just a very cool classic looking Cobra villain. In the sixth and final shipment of FSS4, we got Tiger Force Sneak Peek. So this is the very first version of Sneak Peek that we got in the modern era. Uh, we did get a more classically colored one uh, down the road. But I was a big fan of Sneak Peek when I was a kid. He was a toy that I really liked. And uh, yeah, he was a character that I really wanted in the modern era. So I was very happy to get this figure. Now, there was only two versions of Sneak Peek in the vintage line. The standard one, which came in red and gray, which is the one that I had. And then they released a uh, Night Force version. And uh, yeah, this isn't based on either of those. This is based on a figure that was released in the UK in 1991. That's the uh, Tiger, Force, uh, Tiger Force Sneak Peek, which never came to North America. So it's kind of neat. I would have preferred the uh, version 1 colors, but I assumed we probably would get that down the road, and we did. But I think Sneak Peeks look, looks great in, the, in these colors. And again, the club, I think, invested some of their tooling dollars to recreate um, the vintage Periscope. That sneak peek head and it looks really good the original one didn't have any paint apps this one's got some silver paint on the back and silver on the front it looks good he's got some nice accessories with the binoculars now the head here the head and the helmet combo Let's pop that off there for a second this is another one of those heads that they like to reuse a lot so I actually mentioned it in my last video, I believe, because we first got that head and helmet combination on Airborne. Uh, it was reused for Hit and Run. Here it is again. Uh, that's not Destro like his base says this guy came with a vehicle and he didn't actually come with a display base So I just put him on an extra one and uh, Yeah, this is roll bar I believe so you see not only do they have the same helmet, but they've got the same head. They all look the same um, regardless I, I Really like this head and I think it suits sneak peek maybe better than any of the other guys I, And I think he looks great. So I'm totally fine with them using this head um Sort of like with Law in the Vintage line, the uh, Vintage Sneak Peek was kind of pudgy looking. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that he slimmed down for this figure. I think he's actually, he's cooler than he ever was. So yeah, a great figure and a, and a highlight of this subscription service for me. And with Sneak Peek, we got Outback version 9. So this is Tiger Force Outback. Now, uh, like Sneak Peek, there was no Tiger Force Outback in the vintage North American line. He was only released in the Tiger Force Deco in the UK. And so that version of Outback came out in 1990 in the UK. And this is the first time we're getting a version of it here in North America. So they made some weird choices with that UK figure. For one, that shirt uh, is pretty goofy looking. All the other Tiger Force guys just wore stripes. I'm not sure why Outback decided to go with a cartoony tiger face on his shirt but that's what he did and also tiger for or, uh, outback who'd always been a ginger before with a red beard they went full white on him all of a sudden so uh yeah it's pretty different looking he aged a lot worse than any other gi joe in my collection so we actually had um four versions of outback in the modern era before we got this figure here's the uh the first one and uh, you'll see here they use the same body um, from the neck down now I don't know why they didn't just paint this figure these colors I think that would have been fine that's probably what everybody was expecting but instead they sculpted a brand new head which uh, don't get me wrong I think the new head is an improvement and yeah it looks really good but it just seems odd when we already had a head that was very much outback unique to outback um 
and this head isn't that different. I don't know why they decided to spend the money on this head when they could have given a character like uh, uh, Sneak Peek, for example, or Pathfinder a new head. I think Pathfinder would have been a much better choice. But either way, this is a cool figure. It's a nice head sculpt. I like the silly shirt. Uh, I like the paint on the pants. Yeah, I like everything about this figure. His body is a... Uh, it's a little skinny, and, you know, maybe he could use a belt. Like, he's not perfect, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, and I'm always happy to add new versions of Tiger Force. And lastly, we've got the mystery 13th figure. So, it was Doc, but not the Doc that we're used to. This is Carla Doc Greer. So, this is the daughter of the Doc that we're all used to, that we know and love. Oops, this is Doc. This is Carl Greer, who's been with uh, G.I. Joe. The original came out in 83. And I've always been a big fan of Doc. So this figure, uh, uh, the concept behind a female version of Doc originated in the short-lived G.I. Joe comic called G.I. Joe Reloaded that Devil's Due published. And it was separate from the main Devil's Due comic book. It was kind of like an ultimate version. It was uh, set in the modern era. It had a new history. It wasn't bogged down by all the years of continuity. And uh, yeah, they had introduced Carla Greer, saying that Carl had died and she had kind of taken on his mantle as the G.I. Joe doctor. And then when IDW took on the license, they, uh, they kept Carla, but they kept Carl too. So they were both around. And... Uh, yeah, I'm happy to get this version of Carla. She does have a brand new head. And it looks pretty good. Now she does have a couple of problems here. She does not like to hold on to her accessories. Uh, in the time it took me to drag her from the shelf to here, she must have dropped both of these items like a dozen times. And also, she's got a bit of a, a hunch. Like she can't really look up straight. But those are minor issues. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool figure. And as I've said before, getting new characters rather than just repainted versions of Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow or whatever, it's always appreciated. So yeah, I'm happy to have this new character. And uh, that's it for this figure subscription service. So that's my review of figure subscription service number four. Uh, stay tuned for future videos where I'll be reviewing the uh, final four figure subscription services. So if you liked this video, please uh, hit the like button. Please subscribe to my channel and uh, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, I'll see you next time.